Welcome back. We've got new Fox News polls released this morning, and it shows coronavirus is the number one issue for voters headed into the 2020 election. More than half of them disapprove of how the president has handled this pandemic. I'm joined right now by the White House's chief of staff, Mark Meadows. He has been leading the administration through this crisis. And Mark, it is good to have you this morning. Thanks very much for joining us. First off, what can you say to your critics who say the president has fallen short in his response to the pandemic? Well, obviously, any time that we uh, get uh, faced with something that is new and unusual, uh, you, you actually have to, to engage. And so this came from China. Uh, in the last four or five months, we've been having to figure out how to provide uh, personal protective equipment, uh, ventilators, uh, making sure that we have uh, hospital beds. And, and uh, I can tell you, as we look forward, uh, there are a number of things that we're working on to make sure that we have the therapeutics, uh, even even as recent as this morning shipments going to Florida and Indiana and other places to make sure that uh, some of the, the the treatments that are needed in these critical areas are actually happening. And uh, uh, I, I also can tell you that it's a 24-7 around the, the clock kind of, of work. I was on the phone with uh, the president this morning as we were working on some of the responses. You'll see some new initiatives coming out this week uh, as the president uh, is not only leading, but will continue to uh, to lead and step up in a number of fronts. One of those that you mentioned just earlier, Maria, is, is about our schools. How are we going to open our schools and make sure that moms and dads uh, don't have to worry about the safety uh, of, of our, our children that are going back to schools? And so there will be over $70 billion that this president has already uh, uh, authorized to work with Congress to try to make sure that we not only keep the classroom safe, but the teachers are safe and the students right. safe, and you'll see a, a very broad five, uh, five to six uh, points in terms of what we will be doing in terms of making sure that our schools are safe. That's really important. Obviously, we are going to have to live with this for a little while before we get the innovation from our pharma sector and a vaccine. Tell me what the president would like to see in another relief package, Mark. Where are we in terms of the relief and the impact on the economy and people's livelihoods? Well, there's uh, the, the discussions have just started over the last uh, week or so. We've been having a number of internal discussions over the last couple of months. But uh, as we've started to engage with our our uh, Senate and House colleagues uh, up on Capitol Hill, those will start in earnest starting tomorrow, Monday. I know that uh, uh, Leader McConnell and uh, Leader McCarthy will be coming in to meet with the president and Stephen Mnuchin, who's leading it from our side, uh, to actually start to fine-tune it. So I'd see there's there's three different areas that we're going to make sure of, that we have enough money to to, uh, to ex make sure that we expedite not only the warp speed as it relates to uh, the, uh, uh, the, the treatments that we have, whether it be therapeutics or vaccines, but we also want to make sure that we keep people employed. Uh, when, when you look at the economy and where we need to go with it, uh, we're, we're not going to be shy about uh, uh, making sure that we have protections for the American worker and those that, that employ uh, individuals. And so you're going to see a, an additional thrust there. Um, uh, you know, it looks like that that new package will be in the trillion dollar range uh, as we've started to look at it, whether it's a payroll tax deduction, whether it's making sure that unemployment benefits continue without a disincentive to, to return to work. And then bluntly, uh, we're looking at a number of, of areas to look at manufacturing, bringing some of those critical manufacturing jobs back from overseas so that we're never put in a situation where we have to depend on foreign countries to make sure that we can protect Americans. And the president has talked about the crime across the country as well. Is there something coming in terms of an executive order on r returning law and order to this country? Well, he's already done a couple of things, but he's working very closely with Attorney General Barr. I can tell you that this week what we're, we're looking at is not only uh, looking at what a lot of people have called uh, the executive order on statues, which he did that, but that's really, uh, the statues are one thing, but it's really about keeping our communities safe, and the president's committed to do that. Uh, some of the unrest that we saw even in the last month or so, but uh, particularly last night and the, and the week leading up to it, in Portland. It's just not acceptable when you look at communities not being safe and uh, not upholding 
threatening the rule of law. So yeah. Attorney General Barr is, right. is weighing in on that with Secretary Wolf, and you'll see something uh, rolled out this week as we start to go in and make sure that the communities, whether it's Chicago or Portland or uh, Milwaukee or, or someplace across the heartland of the country, we need to make sure that our communities are safe. Mark, let me, let me uh, turn to the Russia probe. You did such an excellent job when you were on the Oversight Committee in terms of zeroing in on the origins of the Russia probe. We now know for sure. Lindsey Graham told us this a, about a month ago, actually, so our audience was aware that the FBI knew that the dossier was just made up garbage, and the uh, subsource told the FBI agents that. And yet Jim Comey and Andrew McCabe kept on pushing forward, renewing warrants to spy on Carter Page. Your reaction? Action to what we know now, and when are we going to hear from John Durham? Will there be indictments, sir? Well, uh, I think the American people expect in indictments. I know I expect indictments based on the evidence I've seen. Uh, Lindsey Graham did a good job in getting that out. We know that they not only knew that there wasn't a case, but they continue to investigate and spy. And yes, I use the word spy on on Trump uh, campaign officials and actually even doing things uh, when this president was uh, was sworn in and after that and doing it in an inappropriate manner. You're going to see a a couple of other documents come out in the coming days that will suggest that not only was the campaign spied on, but the FBI did not act appropriately as they were investigating. It's all starting to come unravel, uh, to unravel, and I tell you, it's time that people go to jail and people are indicted. It's just unbelievable that for three years this president was investigated and investigated again over something that wasn't even true and the entire country was up in arms about collusion. I mean, you know, I don't hear anything on the other side of the aisle about this wrongdoing which is just well, stunning to me. Well, it is stunning. And here's the interesting thing is, it's not only that it wasn't true, the problem is they knew it wasn't true. And when you know something is not right. true and you continue the investigation, that's collusion. That's the kind of thing that we must stop. And that's what we, where we need to hold people accountable. Mark, it's great to have you this morning. Please come back soon. Thanks so much. Thanks, Maria. Mark Meadows joining us there. Coming up next, Louisiana Senator John Kennedy with breaking news on what to expect uh, from the Senate as we look ahead.